Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Dinah Sabeljo Kennard. I'm the Director of Admission Partnerships and Programs at St. Edwards University. It's wonderful to have you here today on the virtual hilltop. Um, I know that we all wish we could be um, experiencing this, this information and this visit, if you will, in person. But of course, circumstances beyond our control um, do not allow for that right now. So um, we're really grateful to have you join us with us, join us in this um, virtual space to learn more about the communication program at St. Edwards University. I'm going to go over a few housekeeping logistics related to Zoom. Um, you're probably quite familiar with Zoom at this point. Uh, so just as a reminder, we will not be using the chat feature today. Your cameras and your mics have been muted. So as you want to communicate with us, if you have questions, or needs kind of along the way, please do enter them through the Q&A tool, which you'll see at the bottom of your uh, screen. We will have a 30 minute presentation approximately that will cover um, all of the kind of content and features of the communication major and minor at St. Edwards and what you can expect if you pursue that degree at St. Ed's. Um, and then we certainly will have plenty of time at the end to get to any and all questions that you may have. So you're welcome to enter questions along the way as we go through in the webinar. Most of those questions will probably um, be kept until the end of the formal presentation um, to be addressed at that time. So with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and introduce our featured speaker today. Dr. Stephen A. King is the professor and chair of communication at St. Edwards. And he's prepared a very thorough presentation for you today. So with no further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick it over to Dr. King. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. I'd like to extend my welcome uh, and hello from the Hilltop, St. Edwards University, the city of Austin, and the Department of Communication. So what I'd like to do is to tell you a little bit about myself at the outset. And then in about 25 to 30 minutes, we'll talk about your experience on the Hilltop and how a university education can be a transformational experience. So let's go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, so I am currently the chair and professor of communication. I've been on the Hilltop for two years. Um, I arrived in the city of Austin in July of 2018. So I know many of you are um, rising seniors. Some of you live out of state, but regardless of whether you live out of state or in state, um, if you decide to go to college, um, if you decide to go to St. Edwards University or any other university, you'll be experiencing cultural change. You'll be meeting new people. I can definitely empathize with that because Texas is the 10th state I've lived in. Uh, I come from a military family. That along with the fact that I have three uh, college degrees basically meant that I moved around a lot. So for those of you who are anticipating moving and having new experiences, I can definitely empathize. Prior to arriving in Austin, I was the chair of the communication department at Eastern Illinois University. And then, uh, and I was there in Illinois for five years. And before that, I worked at uh, Delta State University in the Mississippi Delta, and I was a coordinator of a speech and theater program for 18 years. Now I will tell you all my degrees are in communication and that's because when I took an interpersonal communication class when I was a sophomore at Boise State University, I fell in love with the class and I fell in love with the degree. And you'll find that communication majors at St. Edwards University use that expression. They really love their degree classes and so forth. So my bachelor's degree is from Boise State University in Idaho. And you can see how I'm gonna move around the map here. My master's degree is from University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. And then I crossed the Mississippi River and landed in Indiana. So my PhD is from Indiana University in Bloomington. Over the years, I've taught about 15 different communication courses. So um, if you end up at the Hilltop and become a communication major, uh, I will most likely be teaching your intro class, Introduction to uh, Communication. I also teach advanced level classes such as inter intercultural communication, rhetoric courses, and special topics courses such as the rhetoric of public memory. My research uh, um, has spanned interests related to rhetoric. Uh, so I've studied reggae music from Jamaica and I spent the summer of 1994 studying uh, in Kingston, Jamaica. Uh, doing my dissertation research. When I lived in the Mississippi Delta, I studied blues music. 
So basically, as a scholar, as a person, you need to find your passion, and I found my passion studying music. I've also studied social movements such as the Civil Rights Movement and the Rastafarian Movement out of Jamaica. Uh, my research has also looked at tourism and the issue of public memory. So right now I'm working on a book project which looks at how Mississippi is finally uh, attempting to promote and remember its civil rights history. Um, and I hope to deliver the book manuscript in one year. That's the deadline. So I too have to meet all kinds of deadlines. So, so that gives you a little bit of information about who I am and, and my background. And so we're gonna go to the next slide. So when you enter a department of communication, uh, sometimes uh, the word communication can be problematic in terms of trying to explain that word that's often used, we use it all the time, to others. Uh, and so I found, number one, that a number of people only think of classes in communication as classes in which we teach you how to talk, like a public speaking course. And then finally, number two, because we communicate every day, we think we're good at it. But in fact, many of us need lots of skill and training. So I'll talk about both of these issues hand in hand, because I too had to explain to my parents, I'm getting a degree in communication. And they said, what's that? So I had to explain it to them. So we'll go to the next slide. So yes, our intellectual roots date back 2,500 years, 2,500 years to ancient Greece and ancient Rome, where... Um, Public speaking uh, was an important form of communication or what was called rhetoric. Um, so it's no wonder that um, oftentimes when people think of classes in communication, it's, they think only of a public speaking class. I've even had people tell me like, so you're gonna teach me how to talk? Well, there's much more than that. So the discipline is called communication. The, uh, our professional organization has been around over a century. Uh, but if we go to the next slide, you'll see that we have a number of subfields. So within the larger umbrella of communication, there are all kinds of fields of study, including interpersonal communication, which is the class I took at Boise State. And I said, you know, it's a class in which you study relationships. And I thought, this is just a fantastic class. So interpersonal communication looks at how we interact with people one-on-one. -on -one. I teach the intercultural communication class, which looks at how people from different cultural groups interact. We have um, areas of interest in classes in media communication, listening, public relations, organizational communication, health communication, which is really relevant, uh, particularly now that we are dealing with a global pandemic. Uh, we teach classes in small group and teamwork communication, environmental communication, and religious and spiritual communication. And these are just a, a small sampling of all the different subfields within communication. So one, I think of the, one of the big advantages of a communication degree is it's so flexible. It's almost recession proof, you know, that you can go in all kinds of different directions in terms of the courses that you want to take, what you want to specialize in, and then your post-graduation opportunities, which I'll talk at the end of the presentation. So let's go to the next slide. So because communication is something that we do every day, you know, we listen more than any other form of communication. Typically college students listen 55% of the time and we speak less and write less than we listen. Um, and we use communication every day in our language, like I've communicated with someone, I'm communicating with someone, but we use the word uh, in a way that we don't use other disciplines such as psychology. We never say I'm psychologizing with someone. I don't even think that's a word. So because we do it every day, we think we're good at it, we think we're competent, but in fact, all of us need more theory, and more practice and more skills in communication, interpersonal communication, like conflict resolution, how we interact with those who are different from us, um, small group and teamwork, the classes which I teach. Uh, when I teach a section on listening, I basically tell my students, talk about uh, some of the listening barriers uh, that you yourself really need to work on is that um, these are issues that make you less um, skillful uh, a listener than you would like to be. And students talk about how the room itself, there's like physical distractions, the room might be hot, or they're thinking about something else. So there's like internal distractions. And many of the students admit, and I'll admit it too, uh, oftentimes we are pseudo listeners. So we appear to be listening we establish eye contact, we back channel by saying, uh-huh, uh-huh, we're not listening at all, or very little. 
So um, we, all of us need additional training and practice in communication. So just because we do it every day, doesn't mean that we're necessarily competent uh, at it. Um, I will tell you, a study came out several years ago which looked at the gap between what was learned in high school and what was expected in college. And uh, uh, number one was science. So there was a big deficit of science knowledge. Number two was communication, primarily because high schools rarely offer a communication class other than public speaking. So this is an assumption that because we do it, we must be good at it, but um, we all need additional training and skills, and that's what we offer uh, in, in the department. And you'll see later on, that's what employers are looking for. Desperately, they're looking for people who have good communication skills. So we'll go to the next slide. So let me provide a little bit of information about the degree program itself. So if you pursue a degree in communication, it's going to be a bachelor's degree of arts in communication. We'll go to the next slide. So we are the largest major in the School of Arts and Humanities, the third largest major on campus. Very popular major. In fact, uh, the Princeton Review listed communication as the eighth most popular degree across university campuses in the United States. Typically, we have over 200 students as, as majors in the program. We have a 45-hour degree program in which students take 24 hours of core requirements classes that are required, classes in interpersonal and intercultural communication, and then they take 21 hours. So they take basically 15 hours in their primary specialization. You have to pick at least one, and 99.9 .9 of students pick only one specialization. So you pick one specialization, such as public relations and advertising. You take 15 hours in that area, and then you pick up six other hours in another specialization, such as interpersonal and organizational communication. We'll go to the next slide. Now, this is the good news. 100% of communication majors complete an internship before graduation because the internship class, which is column 4350, which most students take at the junior and senior level, uh, it's a required course. It's our culminating experience course, uh, a course in which students reflect upon all the knowledge and skills that they've learned. Um, internships are really important in terms of networking, in terms of developing skills. Uh, you probably would not be surprised to learn that companies are going to be more likely to give the uh, first offer of a job to someone who's been interning at the organization than someone that they, they don't even know who this person is. They just applied for the position. You can apply for more than one internship. Um, internships can be online. They can be face-to-face. -face, they can be off campus. They, be, they can be on campus. Let's move to the next slide. Some communication internship experiences, including South by Southwest. So we've had students intern uh, for that organization, Austin City Limits, Fox News, Dateline, uh, Texas Music Office, Capitol Buildings. This is just a small sampling of internship experiences uh, for our students. And we offer this class uh, fall, spring, and summer. So I think right now we probably had about 15 students sign up for summer internships. Let's go to the next slide. So because the degree itself is 45 hours, if you're an incoming freshman, you're basically what's called a native student, you can complete the degree in four years. Um, I was able to complete my degree in four years. That's what your parents want. That's what you want. You want to finish in four years. Um, if you're a transfer student coming in at the junior level, you can finish in two years. Uh, I say this because I serve as an advisor for students here at St. Edwards, but also uh, when I worked at Eastern Illinois University, I advised about 80 students. We had the same number of hours for the major, and it was like clockwork. You know, students who arrived as freshmen graduated in four years. Students who transferred in graduated in two years. So, um, so that's, that's, a, that's a pretty safe bet. Now, because we have about 43 hours of general education courses, add on to that 45 hours for the major, you've got over 30 hours of credits that you need to earn in order to get to 120, which is the number to graduate. So there's plenty of an opportunity to pick up at least one or two minors. So as advisors, we, we work with students to figure out what, what are some good compatible minors or a minor. 
So we've had communication students minor in journalism and digital media, psychology, business administration, women and gender studies. This is just a small sampling of the different uh, minors students have completed. Let's go to the next slide. So as I mentioned, the degree is BA in communication, and then we have four areas of specialization. So let me talk about each one in turn, provide a basic description, and then start articulating different career goals or opportunities uh, for each one of these specializations. So we'll go to the first one, interpersonal and organizational. We'll go to that slide. So interpersonal and organizational communication. So basically uh, you're exploring the role that both play within the context of our profession, personal and professional relationships, professional relationships with uh, superiors, uh, with uh, coworkers, um, personal relationships with family, uh, with best friends. Um, and uh, we offer classes such as family communication and mothers and daughters. And you'll see uh, at the bottom of the screen, some of the coursework that you can take in this area includes everything from nonverbal communication, gender communication, health calm, family communication, leadership, and conflict resolution. Um, developing really good interpersonal skills leads to really excellent, healthy, and productive relationships, both at the social level, sort of at the, at the, uh, at the, for your professional life and also personal relationships, as I mentioned, range from romantic relationships, uh, family communication and friendship. Um, those students who take uh, courses related to organizational communication learn how groups communicate within a variety of different organizational contexts from corporate to nonprofit. And we do offer a class actually in nonprofit communication within the PR and advertising area. So you'll see that there are a number of courses that students can take in each one of these areas and you'll find many of these courses in more than one of these specializations. So let's go to the next slide. So with this particular specialization, you can prepare to explore careers such as corporate training, sales, become an entrepreneur, human resources, counseling, an event coordinator and more. So this is just a small sample of a number of different careers that are often related to specialization within interpersonal and organizational communication. We'll go with our second special uh, specialization. So we'll go to the next slide. Our next uh, specialization is media arts and broadcast journalism. So here students take a variety of communication and journalism classes. So the communication classes include communication and pop culture, video production. We also have offered a, a special topics course in audio production. We offer some film classes such as film theory and analysis. Uh, if you're tending towards more journalism, you can develop skills on writing, editing, and producing news stories. Um, you have an opportunity to take classes related to radio, uh, TV, and other broadcast media. Um, and let's take a look at some of the career possibilities with this specialization. If we can go to the next slide. Yeah, so video editing and production, blogging, filmmaking, media critic, broadcasting, and more. Uh, my main area of interest uh, right now is rhetoric with a secondary interest in, interest in intercultural communication. But when I was your age, I was exploring different careers. I was a journalist for a number of years. I worked for a TV station as a summer internship. Um, I worked in a recording studio. I worked for the university um, radio station for uh, three years. So I explored different media areas. So I have some, uh, a little bit of background in this particular area. So let's go to our next specialization. Public relations and advertising. So as I mentioned, we have over 200 students in this particular, in our major. Typically, we have anywhere between 80 to 100 students in PR and advertising, definitely the most popular specialization of all the four. So advertising is pretty self-explanatory, but public relations, public relations is the tool by which organizations create a favorable relationship between the organization and the public. Um, so oftentimes public relations is often called what's called STRATCOM or strategic communication. 
and um, classes focus on how we can promote a brand image issue or mission. Uh, some of the guiding principles in this particular specialization include problem solving, decision making, ethical practice, social responsibility, uh, with an emphasis on digital media and technology. Um, we have offered a special topics course in crisis communication. Uh, this fall, we're offering a special topics course in conference and event planning. A class we offer uh, at least once a year is social media for public relations. We also offer a number of advertising courses, including advertising creative strategy. Um, so the coursework here is just a sample of all the coursework within this specialization. There are a number of career options in this partic particular area. So let's go to um, this next slide. Careers include global communication specialist, promotion manager, account executive, fundraiser, social media manager. Uh, and I will tell you, I looked at some data looking at what are the trends in communication. It was from about 2019 to 2024. Like what's the outlook look like? And one of the top areas in communication is public relations and advertising. Maybe that's one of the reasons why students really um, have selected this as a specialization because there's because this particular area, uh, the job employment outlook is really good and is on the ascent. And we'll go to our final specialization. Rhetorical and cultural studies. So as I mentioned before, our intellectual history as a discipline goes back to ancient Greece, ancient Rome, 2,500 years ago. And at the time we thought, Rhetoric was only about the art of giving a speech in front of an audience, but over time we have uh, enlarged the scope of rhetoric. So anything that's symbolic is rhetorical. So as rhetoricians, we study speeches, advertisements, mu music, museums, architecture, social media. Um, cultural studies is a branch of, of interest that focuses on issues of power, oppression, and social justice. So of the three different um, paradigms that we use to sort of organize many of our courses. One is called a critical paradigm, which looks at power, oppression, and social justice. And so many of our courses come at the study of rhetoric from a critical perspective. Thus, I would love to, and I plan to teach a class in social movements. Um, and obviously the protests that engulfed the nation this summer, it would be a topic of discussion in that particular class. Some of the coursework in this area include rhetoric of public memory, which I've taught uh, in the past. So the debate about what do we do with Confederate statues is a debate we had in that public memory class. Other classes include rhetoric and religion, political communication and communication and popular culture. Um, and uh, if you remember, communication and popular culture also is a class that you can take uh, within um, um, another specialization, media arts and broadcast journalism. So again, many of these courses can be found as course options in different specializations. This means that basically if you select one specialization and you decide to switch to another one, um, you're not going to lose a lot of ground in terms of timeline to graduation because there's a lot of overlap among these different uh, specializations. So what, what I've done here, here is provide a, an overview of the different specializations that uh, students uh, can select from. Again, you don't have to select a specialization when you enter the major, but probably by the end of your sophomore year, you definitely need to declare uh, a specific specialization um, and then start advancing towards graduation. So we'll go to our next slide. Oh, I should also point out that um, we offer careers in this particular area that are related to rhetoric and cultural studies, everything from human, right, human rights advocate to director of diversity and inclusion. In fact, a faculty member in my former department uh, ended up leaving the university and becoming the director of diversity and inclusion at a university in California. Um, a lot of lawyers out there have a rhetoric background. Communication consultant is a career, and it's related to rhetoric and cultural studies. So we'll go to our next slide. So 
uh, one thing to sort of um, remember is um, if you pursue a degree in communication, there's going to be lots of flexibility and lots of career paths for you. Here's a sample. So this is a small sample of different career paths from social media and blogging to entertainment to human resources to writing to sports. Dr. Stephanie Martinez has taught a class in sports communication. Okay, we'll go to the next slide. We have a minor which uh, is 21 hours. So uh, basically students take 12 hours of elective courses and then nine hours of electives. Typically right now we have about 28 plus minors in communication. We'll go to the next slide. So a question that you have is, so what's, what's gonna be my experience as a communication student? You can see these students in this, in this photo are smiling and they're sitting at one of the work uh, study stations in Holy Cross Hall and the communication department is located on the third floor of this beautifully restored building. So let's talk about the communication student experience. We'll go to the next slide. So one of our student organizations is called PRSSA or the Public Relations Student Society of America. This organization was formed in the late 1960s. Currently right now, 9,000 students over 300 chapters across the United States belong to PRSSA. Uh, these students meet once a week with a faculty advisor. They have on and off campus activities, including in 2018, they attended a public relations uh, conference in Austin. The, but there are other um, opportunities within the department. So we'll go to our next slide. Uh, the communication discipline has an honorary society called Lambda Pi Eta. When you become a junior, um, and if you have an overall GPA of 3.0 and a communication uh, GPA of 3.25, you can apply to join Lambda Pi Eta. Typically, we initiate anywhere between 20 to 30 students every spring. So that's an opportunity for you. Um, every year, we award a student or student the Marion Albert Scholarship for Leadership. So the faculty makes a decision about this in the fall and we award it in the spring. Um, every April, we um, award one of our outstanding graduating seniors, the Outstanding Graduating Seniors Award. We sponsor a university public speaking contest in October every year. We bring uh, speakers from campus uh, to present at our communication speaker series. And we also have students who write for the Hilltop Views and also participate in Hilltop Radio or Topper Radio, which is a student organization and an internet um, radio student club. So these are just some different student experiences that you would have in the Department of Communication. So we'll go to our next slide. Another question is, so uh, will, the, will the faculty get to know me? Will they know who I am? Definitely we do. And there's lots of smiles. So here we have some students talking with Dr. Stephanie Martinez um, in another part of the third floor of Holy Cross Hall. Uh, and so let's talk about your experience with the faculty in the department. We are definitely dedicated to teaching. So yes, we do service, yes, we research, but our main focus is teaching. Um, and uh, we have small class sizes. We would definitely get to know you and your name. If you're at a larger institution, for instance, I went to Indiana University as a PhD student. Um, at that time, the student enrollment there was 37,000, now it's up to 45,000. And some students, I mean, our, some of our classes were 40 or 50 students. Uh, we have a much smaller uh, classroom size. We get to know who you are. We do a lot of advising in the department and lots of mentoring, including we, every year we mentor students and encourage them to submit their essays and creative work to SOURCE, which is the Symposium on Undergraduate Research and Creative Expression. And then we encourage them to see if they can uh, submit their work to source, uh, the journal source. Uh, many of us uh, work with students in the honors program. In fact, last, um, last April, I worked with a student and I served as a faculty mentor for undergraduate thesis on the Underground Kings, which is a Houston rap duo. I learned a lot about rap music and the student learned a lot about rhetoric and the use of music. 
uh, our students attend academic conferences because we know you. We write letters of recommendation, very detailed and specific letters of recommendation, and we continue to mentor after the hilltop. And that is, I mean, I've stayed in contact with students for years. Uh, one of my students who graduated from Delta State University in 2009, I still stay in contact with her. And I recently wrote a letter of recommendation for her and she landed a job. So we continue to mentor after the hilltop. And it's important to also know that faculty research as well. If you wanna be a good teacher, you have to keep current and you have to do research. All of us go to conferences, present papers, publish books and journal articles. Let me show you an example. Let's go to the next slide. Dr. Billy Ernest teaches a class in Lying and Deception, very popular book. He is also uh, the author of the third edition of the Lying and Deception textbook. Uh, so uh, we have faculty who are engaged in the research and that ends up in the classroom. Uh, it benefits us as teachers and you as students. We'll go to the next slide. The classroom experience. Um, here's some examples. Students who take the communication of popular culture class, the main project there is you're working at South by Southwest uh, as, a, as, a, as part of your class assignment. Students who took my rhetoric of public memory class, we looked at different memory uh, objects and places, memorials on and off campus. So on the St. Edwards campus and off campus, in Austin downtown at our Capitol building. So we looked at not only Confederate monuments, but we also looked at monuments to the African-American experience and to the Tejano community. Also students who take the social media and public relations course, um, work in teams and uh, work on projects such as raising awareness and on issues ranging from sustainable living to decreasing plastics in the ocean. So you definitely get that uh, quality experiential classroom experience that you may not get in other places in which you have a large class and you're basically being lectured at. Let's move to the next slide. So uh, as you move through the program, you pick up a lot of marketable skills, writing, oral communication, critical thinking, being able to interpret data, uh, meeting strict deadlines, comparing and contrasting information. So we'll go to the next slide. So the evidence is quite clear. This is just one survey. Uh, the evidence goes back 30 years. What do employers look for when they are assessing students who are graduating from college? They assess this in the interview. They assess this in the cover letter and resume. Basically, uh, in the most recent public um, uh, documentation of the job outlook from the National Organization of Employers and Colleges, it's their business to basically figure out what employers are looking for in terms of skills that college students should possess. Um, in their job outlook of 2019, number one, communication skills, having good um, writing skills. Two, problem solving skills. Three, being able to work in a team, which is not an assumed skill. So that's why we teach a class in small group communication. Other uh, uh, attributes include like good work ethic, Number seven on their list is good verbal communication skills. Number eight is leadership. We teach a class in leadership. Um, you can look at a number of different surveys and what you'll basically find is communication skills are in the top five, in the top 10. So what employers look for is college graduates who have good communication skills. That's what we teach. And these are employers of that range the spectrum of different um, careers. So let's go to the next slide. Uh, most likely you, you already have, or you'll be creating a LinkedIn account of the top six skills that you need to have on your LinkedIn account, communication is one of them. So the job, it's quite clear that employers are looking for students who have good communication skills. We'll go to the next slide. So we definitely support your goals when you're on campus and then when you leave the hilltop. So here are our students uh, going through the annual graduation rite of passing through the main building and the red doors. So um, when you show up on the hilltop, four years will go by very quickly and you too will be walking through the red doors. So let's go to the next slide. So a question is, so tell me about your alumni. And this is a small sampling and you'll see that 
communication alumni have gone wide and far and been very successful. So here's Charles Rogers, who graduated in 2009. He's a TV film writer, director, and producer, lives in Los Angeles. Um, and as uh, uh, one of his most recent films was this official selection of the Sundance Film Festival in 2018. Let's go to the next slide. So uh, Melissa Goldsmith, who graduated in 2011, uh, not only did she win this award of excellence, but she also won an Emmy. Uh, and, you know, she's one of our proud graduates. And I will tell you, when I was at Eastern Illinois University, uh, one day I received a phone call from a very excited uh, parent. Her um, daughter graduated from our master's program, and she said, my daughter won her third Emmy as one of the producers of the Steve Harvey show. So our graduates go... Uh, are very successful um, and uh, find um, lots of opportunities out there. Let's go to our final slide. Uh, here's a more recent example from Tim Byrons, who graduated in 2018. Um, he played golf, worked in the campus ministry, interned with the Golf Channel, NBC Universal, and now is uh, uh, pursuing a master's degree uh, in a university in Arizona. So we do have students who go on to get advanced degrees, master's degrees, and PhD uh, degrees. So we'll go to the next slide. So I, I wanna conclude by talking about, um, as you're thinking about um, opportunities and places to pursue in terms of um, colleges, think about the fact that with a communication degree, it's very flexible. You can all, go in all kinds of different directions. Uh, but one thing you need to do is find your passion and what you're passionate about. But one thing that often gets lost in um, uh, uh, discussion about selecting um, universities is how a university education can be transformational. And I will tell you whether you're 18 and you arrive at the hilltop and leave at 22, or whether you arrive on campus later in life, college is a transformational experience. It basically changes who you are. I entered college when I was 18, I left when I was 22, and fundamentally I was a different person. And it's because of the classes I took, uh, the knowledge I learned, the, the, the friends I made, the relationships I had with faculty, the internship experiences, the study abroad experiences. Fundamentally, uh, while we need to think about how an education can lead to um, success professionally and also personally, we, all, we shouldn't forget that being on the hilltop or anywhere else can lead to a transformational experience. Um, so I'd like to leave it with that, um, and I welcome your questions. Thank you, Dr. King, for that very thorough and effective presentation. I know we have a number of students joining us from um, all parts of Texas and many places outside of the state, too. And so, students, I just invite you to go ahead and contribute uh, through the Q&A tool any questions that you would like to ask Dr. King. Um, he will, we will continue this webinar for as long as you have questions. So this is a fantastic opportunity to um, ask the chair of the department um, what you want to know about communication. Um, we do have a question from a student, uh, Dr. King, who's asking about how students go about figuring out or discerning rather what specialization within the communication department might be a right fit for them. So I know you indicated a timeline that typically students will select a specialization by the end of the sophomore year. Um, what coursework and opportunities exist for them in those first few semesters that they would be at St. Edwards to explore the different areas of specialization and, and really um, determine what's right for them and what they want to pursue? Yeah, I think that's an excellent question. And Again, I can tell you that I explored different careers when I was your age. I thought, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I want to be a journalist. I want to work in TV. I want to work in radio. I want to be a sound engineer. Um, and I was trying to figure it out. But communication is a big tent. So you can uh, make uh, changes along the way and still, still uh, keep the degree. Because if, if you end up switching mul majors multiple times, that delays graduation. So I think the big tent aspect of it, I think is important. Here's my suggestion. So one of the classes that you really need to take early on is 
called COM 1306, which is our intro class. We basically provide an introduction to the field. So we have in that class, we talk about interpersonal communication, intercultural communication, media. Uh, we talk about um, health communication. We talk about public speaking. So in that way, if you find yourself gravitating towards, well, this is a particular area of interest that I have that I see lines up with one of these specializations. Uh, that, that may be a clue. Also, I would say you might want to take an intro class. So some of our introduction classes include introduction to interpersonal communication. You take that class and you say, I really love this. Well, then that might be, uh, that might give you an idea that you want to pursue interpersonal organizational as a specialization, or you might want to take the introduction to advertising or public relations. And you really love that you say, I want to pursue the PR advertising, or if you take classes in journalism or media classes, and you really like those classes, like an intro class, like we offer a media communication class that might give you an indication that that's the specialization that you would like to select. So I think taking our intro to communication class early on, and then secondly, maybe taking an intro class in one of the specializations is a, is a good way to kind of figure out which one that you want to select. Again, probably by the end of the sophomore year, you want to, you want to designate one of those as your specialization, but you can certainly change your mind. Students have done that, and you're not going to lose a lot of ground because there's a lot of course overlap across the different specializations, but that's, that's an excellent question. Um, and sometimes you have the answer at the outset, and sometimes it takes a while. It took me three years. It took me four years. Um, it wasn't until I was a senior, I said, you know what, I want to go into teaching. If you had asked me that when I was a freshman, I would have said, absolutely, there's no way I would want to do this. But by my senior year, it's like, this is what I want to do. And luckily, I had faculty members who mentored me and said, get out in front of the classroom, in front of this class, and do some uh, practice teaching. <laughs> So it gave me some good experience and it's what I wanted to do. So those are my suggestions. Excellent, thank you for that. So if a student decides to pursue a minor in communication, Dr. King, does a student end up pursuing simply the minor in communication as opposed to the major? Does a student pursue a specialization as well when they're doing a minor? Um, or is the coursework no. more kind of broad in terms of, of the areas of communication that are covered? Yeah, so the minor includes four required courses, including like media communication, interpersonal communication. So 12 hours are required. And then the other nine hours you can pick from one specialization. So there's some flexibility there. Uh, right now our minor is 21 hours. We're working on um, revisions to our curriculum. And we hope by fall of 2021 that the minor will now be 18 hours. Um, and a little bit and have a little bit more flexibility than it does now, but it is a popular minor and we do have about 28 students minoring in communication. Um, I remember I picked up a magazine that was basically, it was designed for an accounting uh, audience. These were like future accountants and it said communication skills you need to have as an accountant. So talk about a quantitative dense fields such as accounting, being a CPA, you got to have good communication skills. So a communication minor can be used virtually for every major. And I've had, peop I've had students pick up multiple minors. In fact, at my last, uh, my, my position, student took, a student took an extra semester and picked up his third minor in film studies. So having a good major minor combination that you can um, include on your resume, I think will be very helpful. Excellent. So we have a question here um, that relates to, to really kind of what are the benefits of studying communication at St. Edward, um, somewhat of a, a smaller school or a large small school, if you will, school, as you mentioned, of about 3,700 undergrads. Um, what's the benefits of studying communication at a school like St. Edward's at St. Edward's versus um, other universities that may be much larger in terms of, of the volume of students on the campus and the size of the communication program there. Okay, so number one, we get to know you and who you are. Number two, the classes are small, in which basically we're going to be expecting you to give presentations. We're going to be expecting you to write uh, and to conduct research. And I mentioned before, what do employers look for? They're looking for students who have good writing skills. 
And if you're a large institution in which there's large class sizes, the faculty may say uh, there may be three or four exams and that's about it. Students are going to do a lot of writing. So it's um, getting to know the other students in the class, getting, know the, getting to know the faculty, um, being able to uh, work in teams uh, on projects, um, being able to um, take courses uh, in a department that offers like special topics courses such as crisis communication and uh, the and public memory classes which are based on our area of research. Um, so I think for all those reasons, um, it's uh, St. Edwards has an advantage over larger institutions. And I will say my undergraduate department um, was, uh, Boise State University at that time was about 8,000 8, students, um, small class sizes. And the one thing that I realized is that I was really prepared for success because when I got the, my master's program, it was a pretty seamless transition. So when you graduate from college, you turn around and say, did I do my job and did St. Edwards do its job? Um, we want to make sure that you have a seamless transition to whatever life awaits you afterward. So I think it's the relationships that you develop, uh, the hands-on skills, um, the, the opportunities, particularly in Austin. It, it's one thing to um, um, attend college um, in, a, in an area such as Eastern Illinois University, fine campus, but it's in a small town with not a lot, not a lot opportunities in Austin. You have, I think you have, you have both the Hilltop, which is this beautiful campus, um, quiet, serene, right in the very vibrant city of Austin, which shows no end of growth. Uh, and it's one of the most recession-proof cities in the United States. So there's lots of opportunities here in Austin for like internships and other opportunities. Perfect. So I, I think we have time for perhaps just one more question. So I'll invite in an opportunity for students to ask any remaining questions before we close out. We do have a question about, uh, I will go ahead and make this our final question unless a late question comes through, but um, we do have a question about internships, Dr. King. And I know you mentioned some uh, and gave some amazing examples of internships opportunities that exist for students who pursue communication at St. Edwards, internships in the city of Austin, internships elsewhere. Can you talk a little bit about just how those internships connections are made? Like if I'm a student at St. Edwards majoring in communication, how am I gonna get one of those internships? Mm -hmm. So, um, first you would coordinate with the uh, instructor who's teaching the class. So typically we offer one or two sections of the internship class. And so the first thing is to go to the instructor and say, you know, what are some possibilities? Because the instructor keeps both a list of prior internships and contacts. Also, we have a uh, office on campus that deals with um, um, uh, careers. Um, and that's an office that you can go to that can provide some um, examples of internships. So I would say um, talking to other students who have taken the internship class, talking to the instructor who teaches the course, um, as well as working with another um, office on campus, which is basically designed to help students and facilitate uh, student success post-graduation. Yeah, I think that's one of the things that always really impresses me about St. Edwards, not just in the communication department, but in departments across the university is that there are just a multitude of internship opportunities for students to pursue, you know, minutes away from our campus in the city of Austin mm -hmm. and, and in other cities as well. And um, I know we always like to say at St. Edwards because it is very much true. There are more internship opportunities than there are students. So. Um, so yeah. students, if you are interested in coming to St. Edwards and pursuing a major or minor in communication or a major and minor in another area, you're going to have um, multiple opportunities to have hands-on experiential um, experiences and, and, and valuable kind of high impact experiences outside of the classroom through research, through internships, um, and through the connections that you'll make being in the city of Austin. So with that, I want to go ahead and thank all of our um, participants today for logging in and joining us. And hopefully this uh, presentation was informative as you begin to consider your options and opportunities to pursue um, 
college. If you are a rising senior, um, we look forward to working with you in the admission office over the next few months as you begin to make application. In fact, we will be hosting an application and essay workshop on the 30th of July, and you can sign up for that at stedu slash visit if you want to go ahead and hear from us in the admission office and get some advice and some recommendations um, as you begin to think about working on your application over the coming months. I want to thank Dr. Stephen King for presenting today and providing this really valuable information um, about the, the wealth of opportunities that exist in the communication program at St. Edwards. So thank you so much. Dr. King, any thank final you. words before we close out? I would just say um, follow your passion and find uh, your, your, um, uh, your area of interest. I could tell you that um, going to Jamaica and studying reggae music, uh, uh, going to uh, juke joints in the Mississippi Delta and listening to blues music, it's not a bad way to, uh, to pass your time, right? So I learned early on that communication is a big tent, and if I want to study reggae music or the Rastafarian movement or the civil rights movement or blues music, um, I have every opportunity to do that. So, and I, again, I have found in my career that communication students, they don't say, I kind of like my major. They love it. They love their major. So uh, I hope you, um, good luck with the decision-making process, which I know is what we often say when I teach small group communication, these are significant decisions. Uh, so it's, this is a significant decision. So good luck with the process. Any help that I can provide, I'll be more than glad to provide additional information. And Dr. King, can you remind us what your email address is in case there are students that want to follow up with you? Sure. So it's sking1 at uh, stedu. Fantastic. And my name's easy to remember, Stephen King. <laughs> exactly. Very easy to remember. And yeah. students, um, you can also contact us in the admission office. Our contact information is on the slide you see. So if you um, need to get in touch with Dr. King or have follow-up questions for us in the admission office, you can always ping us at that email address. Um, we do look forward to working with you as you uh, continue in your college search and have questions. We know that this is a very defining time in history that happens to coincide with a very defining time in your life. And so please know that we, the St. Edwards faculty and staff and current student body are here to help guide you and support you as you navigate this, this very um, defining and certainly very challenging time. So um, we are here to work with you. We thank you for being connected with us today. Um, and we hope to see you in person on the Hilltop very soon. Until then, please stay safe, take care of yourself, take care of your families, Check in on your friends and be well.